Yo, what is up, Crocs and Clan members, Poker fans, and others who will stump on this video? I'm Sawyer's Crocs in here with another viewer Friday. Today's request comes from Weasel. It's uh, kind of like a follow up to the previous viewer Friday I did, uh, where he asked me to talk about Dawn and Serena. Well, this time he wants me to talk about Misty and Iris. Now, I technically made a video like this, like as, as I was like thinking about some stuff. I already made a video like this. Uh, about two years ago, I think, uh, as a part of the Insane Game Freaks female companion contest type of thing. And this was the first one I made. So, I'm sorry if some of the points are similar, or, I mean, I don't remember what I said in that video, and I didn't want to watch it again, because it might influence me in some way, uh, so I didn't want to do that. So, but just in case it is somewhat similar to that previous video, I apologize. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the things I used to think have not changed. I do still think that Misty, I like Misty more of the two. I don't dislike Iris though. See, here's, here's the thing usually when it comes to the females. I always have this type of, not only do I judge them as what they're doing, but I also judge them on what they could have done. So, with the problem with why I have such a, just, you know, hatred for Serena right now is the fact that she has been so horrible uh, as a character so far and there's no, like, looking forward, there's nothing that could fix it. And with Dawn, you know, well, she had a lot of potential. She had a lot of potential. But they just missed certain marks. I mean, she's still a great character in terms of, like, writing, but I just didn't like her personality and that was one thing that was probably not going to change. When it comes to these two characters, the thing about Misty and Iris is Iris's main problem was her just the fact that she was just annoying as hell, right? Like the, her arrogance, I guess, the the way she perceived things, even though she kind of wasn't at, to that standard, is really what hurt her in, a lot in the series. And I know a lot of people like to bash on black and white as as you know as a whole. I don't like to do that because even though I do have these tendencies with Iris, and I. This just bothers me. Like, it boils my blood every time I have to think about a lot of the shenanigans, a lot of the crap that she used to do. And, like, she kind of had, like, another side to her, right? Like, the whole Dragon Master side of her, it was actually, like, pretty, really fleshed out. And when they did showcase those moments, it kind of made her look like a different character. Which is why I have such a huge problem with it, because that could have been a potential, like, way to go, like... Hey, you know, you have these struggles. Like, the whole ex schedule thing, that was a thing. But they just transition it throughout the whole saga. But they, like, do this whole thing where they, like, revert back to what they were doing. Um, and I just feel like that's kind of the thing that hurts her. Like, I still think she's a great character. Like, hands down, she's just a really great character. And when they do those moments to kind of show off the other side of her, it makes it to where, you know, she's... She, She's not bad, but she could have been so much better. Like, if they actually just removed that entire arrogance at gag that wasn't funny to begin with, I think that she would have, she would probably be the best character, uh, hands down. But, unfortunately, they didn't do that. With Misty, on the other hand, is like, she didn't really have a lot of, like, I still think, I still like her, personality-wise. I, I think she's one of the better ones. I think she's fantastic. As a character, she's kind of mixed, right? I mean, I've always said this. May's my favorite. I like personality and character development the most out of all the girls. With Misty, it's like, I like, I really, really like her character. And I, I feel like there was a lot of potential with in terms of character growth. Because, like, one of the things I always point as a positive to Misty is the fact that she wanted to be a water master. And most of the Pokemon she had were water Pokemon. The only exception would be... Um, Togepi, and that was kind of like an introduction to Gen 2, so like, I don't know if I should blame her for that. I mean, I'm pretty sure the writer is, uh, let's give her a baby, you know, <laughs> just with the hell of it. So like, but for the most part, like, besides Togepi, the, her team was literally just water types. Uh, granted, some of them didn't get the spotlight because they're just not as useful, uh, and so a lot of them just felt like they weren't fleshed out as well, whereas, you know, Iris doesn't have that problem. All her Pokemon are pretty, pretty fleshed out. Every single one of them, all four, and then, I mean, I don't know anything about the Gibble, but it's <laughs> it's there. So she does have these Pokemon that are really, really fleshed out, like Axew had a lot of development, Dragonite 
when, you know, even though it was, he was caught so late, was actually really, really well. Uh, Excadrill, you know, the transition between, you know, being this hard-headed, you know, not trusting Iris, but at the same time we find out later that it's actually he didn't trust himself and that correlation. Imaga was, I guess, like the weakest of them all, but like she still had her own personality and quirks and the rivalry with Snivy really helped. Whereas like that's not really a thing with Misty's Pokemon because like Psyduck, Psyduck is like honestly her most well-known Pokemon, I guess, besides the Togepi. But even he wasn't, like, like, he didn't have anybody, like, help him out. Like, he it was just him. And he was usually just comedy. Granted, when they have those episodes where, like, he's, like, the main, like, attacker. Like, he just destroyed everything. Like, those were cool. But they weren't used as often. Like, that was a, a potential, like, like, a way to go. Like, if the fact that he was comic relief is the thing that hurts him so much... Because if they, like, really, really tried, they could have fleshed out Psyduck so much to the point where, like, Misty was, and Psyduck were, like, the ultimate team. And, like, you know, he he evolves into a gold duck at the end of the saga. Like, that that could have been a thing that they could have done, but unfortunately they didn't do. Politoed is also one that sticks up to mind. Uh, you know, the whole, the Poliwag 2 Politoed line, I really like, the, the, especially the Polygraph stage. I think that was one of my favorites one. Uh, the chemistry between the two is really cool. And then, like, after that, you have Star You, Star Me, and Goldeen don't do shit. And then, like, she does get Corsola, which kind of does something. Like, the thing that sticks up to mind is, like, the fact that Corsola, like, put in work in that water competition. Like, that's the, the one thing I remember about it. Uh, I know that she does get a Gyarados and a Love Disc, so that's a thing. We don't see that in the main saga. Right, we don't see that on the main side. Like she gets Gyarados like in the specials, and then like Love Disc was also like I think it was the Sinnoh specials. I think I don't remember exactly when they showed her off. Like the whole like what was her name? They had two. They had there was two Love Discs and they had nicknames. And I don't remember either one, but that's pretty bad because like they only showed them off. Um, whereas Gyarados did show up not only in those specials but also in the Mewtwo special with the whole like mirage master dude so like that i mean gyarados got more screen time so that was pretty cool but let's let's be honest gyarados is a badass pokemon so i don't want to just state that uh, flat out right now it was i love gyarados okay but anyway so like so they're pokemon right so limited limited supply of like characters and personalities whereas you know limited amount of Pokemon, but very high in personality. So that's like the, the balance point right there. Um, I st Again, and then like going back to, you know, the whole Misty thing, I still think that the chemistry between Misty and Ash is far none the best in this entire, like of all the girls, of all the girls, they have the best chemistry in terms of romance. Like I know a lot of people like to throw out all, you know, Ash and Dawn type of thing. That, I mean, that was more of a friendship level, like, hey, we trust each other type of thing. But in terms of romance, I think that Ash and Misty have the best chemistry. I think the whole Serena stuff is just really weak at this point because they haven't really done anything that really merits that aspect. Like, I always like to bring this up. Misty and Ash technically dance together. And, yeah, maybe it's not the traditional way that people think nowadays where, you know, they're holding hands, or not holding hands, they're, like, dancing together. But, like, they did it in, the, like, the traditional Japanese style, which I feel like is a little bit more of a emotional connection because, like, that's, like, where the series is, is based, right? So it's a lot more cultural. So I feel like it's a lot better, like, in terms of, like, emotions and, like, connection. So, like... Plus, they had other moments throughout the series, and Misty's always with Ash, and Ash actually had those feelings for her back. Like, they was actually shown off in the entire saga. Whereas right now, the best you can get is Ash gave Serena a ribbon. That's pretty much it. Also, this is another pro to Misty. She beat Ash twice. Twice. Because she did it once when they were doing the Togepi stuff. Right? I mean, Ash beat her to get Totoed out, but Misty beat him to get Togepi, and then beat him in the World Cup to get to the final. So, that's why, I don't, Iris, I think, beat, did she beat Ash? I think she did in the, was it, it was one of the tournaments. There was one tournament that she won. I think it was Exodrill versus Pikachu. I think that's what it was. 
and then Pikachu got blown away. That was the one time. And it was an, a matchup with like a ground type versus electric type. And I know that Ash does some things with miracles and like Pikachu somehow like wins against types that it's weak against. But like with with Ash and Misty, like they were first of all on even ground and then the other one it was like showcasing how Misty's just a better trainer in the water. Which, you know, shows off that she is a water master. Like, Iris never beat Ash with a dragon type. So, like, you know, like, let's, let's just be real here. You know, she didn't win in, like, the thing that she's supposedly, like, good at, right? Like, she's, she's a dragon master. And not only that, like, when she did use a dragon, she lost. Because it was Cro Crocorock versus Dragon Knight, and then Crocorock evolved into Crocodile, and then, like, Dragon Knight got blown away. So, you know, it's just, I, I'm just saying, like, the fact that Misty was able to beat Ash in the, you know, show off that she is a Water Master, Iris couldn't do that because she couldn't control Dragon Knight. So, I'm just saying, you know, it's a plus, it's a plus for Misty in this case. I mean, but I, at the end of the day, I don't dislike either of these characters. They're nowhere near my favorites. May will always be number one. I don't know how this Alola girl is going to be, but I don't think... Well, it depends on they, how they handle her. And if they do give her a proper goal and they actually show it off, maybe she might, you know, come close to May's standard. But I don't know. Her, her She's, like, way too high at this point. Uh, but, like, I like both characters. I do. and I But I, I understand the flaws of each one. Like, Misty, she has those problems with the Pokemon not being developed enough. And, I mean, there was, like, one of those things, and this is, like, remembering the video, the, the Insane Game Freak video. She did have, like, this whole fear of bugs thing that never really got this resolved. I don't know why that was a thing, but, I mean, it was probably one of those stereotypical, oh, girls are afraid of bugs, but, like, that that could have gone somewhere. Um, and the same thing with Iris, her fear of ice types never really got resolved. Like, I, I understood that one. Because she's a dragon type trainer, and ice types are super effective against dragon types, hence, you know, being scared of ice types. But, like, that could have also been something they could have fleshed out and, like, maybe try to fix by the end of the saga, but they didn't really do that. Because, like, you're not a dragon type. Your Pokemon are, but you're not dragon type. Why are you scared of ice types? That makes absolutely no sense. So, just a thing. Um... But yeah, so that's going to be it for this uh, Viewer Friday. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for other future... If you have any suggestions for future Viewer Fridays, uh, leave them in the comments down below or send me a PM. I will write it down in my list of Viewer Fridays that I got to do. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to like come back and be more consistent with these because I know I didn't do one last week. But I wasn't home, so I couldn't really do one. But anyway, so um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh... Let me know if you like this. Uh, let, leave your thoughts, comments, all that stuff in the comment section below. Which one do you prefer? If you even like one of these two characters. All that stuff. But yeah, so that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a source of Croxon, And I'll see you guys in future videos.